Hello, my name is Spooky Scott. Um, I'm the music director at Red Rocks Church. Um, I'm creating a little video to send out to all of our keys players to kind of show them like how I play um, piano for our songs and stuff. Um, also, I am recording this on our stage, so if you see people walking around or hear people walking around, um, don't even worry about it. Um, yeah, also I have my notes, otherwise I'll forget what all to talk about. So first I want to talk about the settings. Um, we use Nords at all of our campuses, and they all uh, have the same setting, where it's basically a mellow upright for the piano. And then for pad, we actually use Majestic Pad Shimmer Dark Filter. Um, I believe we got that from Multitracks, like the patches on Multitracks. I have the filter at 50% to create a warm sound. Um, you can bring it in, like raise it up a little bit to bring in a little shimmer. But for the most part, I actually just keep it at 50%. Um, and then with the piano, it sounds like this. I also do have a compressor on set to about three. Um, and the reverb I have set to the stage two option um, with the brightness added onto it. Um, yeah, so that's our setting. Um, let's talk about chords. Um, so my left hand, whenever I, I'm playing, my left hand is basically always following whatever the bass is playing. Um, so if you're playing a one, five, six, four, you're just gonna play octaves of one, five, six, four. And then like for one over three, for example, I will play one in my right hand, but my left hand will obviously play the three. And then five, four, all that stuff. Um, you can add the five in there when you're playing those octaves of each of those chords. So like four, six, five, you can see I'm adding those fifths in there. Um, but you want to be careful. You don't want to add that. If you're playing way down here, you don't want to add the fifths because you can hear how it just muddies it up. So basically anything like this C or below, I will not add that fifth in there. Um, yeah. So right hand, um, there's two kind of different ways I play chords. Um, and most of the time I'm playing block chords. Um, the first type of chords that I'm playing are basically second inversion chords. So if you were playing four, six, five, that's what it sounds like. That is the second inversion. If you don't know what an inversion is, um, it's basically when you take the normal chord, that's a normal chord, it's a four chord in the key of C, but you take, um, Let's start down here. You take this note, put it up on top. That is first inversion. And then second inversion is when you do that again with this note, put that up on top. Second inversion. So it's basically you're playing, playing the root of the note down here. So if we're playing the one, you're playing the one down here and then you're playing five, one, three up here. Um, you can also sometimes take that uh, one out in the middle of the chord you're playing because you're playing it down here. It kind of just opens up those chords a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing like so, so many, like probably 70% of the time. I'm just playing second inversion chords. Um, another thing I'll do is kind of play what I call white boy chords, um, which is basically when you play a one and then a five in the left hand. And it can be up high too, but I prefer this way. Um, and you play that with every chord. So if you're playing one, five, six, four, one, five, and you can even add the seven in there um, just to kind of round out that chord a little bit. Six, four. So I'm not really changing those notes. And it kind of creates all these like suspension chords and stuff. So like you're, that's just a basic one. If you're playing a five, sometimes I like to do that. I'll play the five, but still keep that one in there. Um, and it kind of creates this like just major add four chord, if that's what you call it. I don't know music theory all that well. Um, six, when you play that, you're basically playing a major seven chord. And then when you play four, you're playing like a four sus two chord. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a way to fun way to like cheat the system, but still you know sound really pretty. Um, I'll use white boy chords on uh, like songs that are a lot more sweet sounding. Um, and I'll give you some examples um, at the end of like what songs um, I'm playing and stuff. So yeah, and then also 
you can, I really like, especially for minor chords, add, making it minor seven chords. So that applies also to the two and three. So if we're playing one, two, uh, six, four, for example, I'll play one and then two, I'll play the two up here, the two chord, but I'll keep that one in and that makes it a minor seven. Um, sometimes I won't even play the five up there, so I'll be like one and then that's a two minor seven chord and then six and then four. Also with the three, I like adding the two in there of whatever key you're playing in. Um, so that's one and then a minor three seven chord would be basically this. Yeah, but sometimes I won't even play that because I'm playing the one down here, so um, I can play, you can play a three minor like that. And then six, four. So you can see I like to sometimes like take out notes just to open up the chords a little bit more. Um, that's very common. So those are just a few examples of adding like, you know, some minor, uh, some minor seven chords into it. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't want to get off track. So, um, like I said, I'll give you more examples. Um, so that's what my right hand is doing a lot. Like most of the time is doing block chords, whether it's inversions or white boy chords, but also, um, if there's piano lines, um, you can play those obviously. Um, for example, on never leave, we have a line that goes, Yeah, so obviously you want to be following piano lines when you hear them in the songs. Um, gospel chords are really fun, um, but I would say be careful about where, be really picky about where you put gospel chords. You don't want the entire song to sound like a gospel song, especially if the rest of your band is not playing kind of those gospel chords with you. Um, you're going to stand out quite a bit. Um, but yeah, for example, in Living God, um, we play... Um, a lot of times we'll play the courses one, five, six, four, and then one over three, five, six, four. We'll add, um, a, basically it's like a major three over a sharp five to the six. It's a little walk up. That's a little gospel chord. Um, and we just throw it in for like one course and it's really fun. And the bass follows that too. So it's like one over three. Five, then six. Yeah, so that, again, that's like a major three, sharp five. But So that's one example of a gospel chord that's really fun. Um, but just be really picky. I mean, um, some songs like just beg for a lot of gospel chords, and that's great. But make sure like your whole band is on the same page um, and all that stuff. Just be really picky. You don't want to use it a lot in like, you know, down moments, for example. Um, yeah, so... Uh, let's talk about how I play. So, like I said, I play block chords most of the time. Um, and yeah, for low parts, you obviously want to play soft. You know, you don't want to like it come down to like a bridge progression. Let's go four, five, six, three. Um, if we come down, you don't want to be like, you're obviously just going to stand out way too much. So you want to play softer. Um, four five, six, and then three, four. I also like to make seven chords on um, when I play the four, two. So there's a lot of different... Seven chords are just great. Don't... Yeah, I love them. Um, but yeah. So I'm trying to think of how to explain this. So uh, you want to play softer, but you don't want to play timidly. Um, there's a there's a good balance between like, like you, you want to play confidently. You want to play softer, but you want to play softer confidently, if that makes sense. Um, you don't want to sound like you're scared that you're going to mess up or something like that. So like if you're playing four five, six, three, you don't want to be like, I mean, that sounded kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. But like, you don't want to be like so timid that like, you're not really like, here in the chords. So there's like, you want to play confidently, um, but softer for low moments.
Yeah, and you'll see a lot, sometimes when I'm like creating little like melodies like that, you'll notice that I kind of base it around whatever the three of the chord is. So like if you're playing a four, that's a six up here. So like, and then five chord, seven up there, and then six, one on top, and three. Again, I like to add the two in the three chord, so. Um, yeah, or the five in there. But that's like creating melodies. I'm getting way ahead of myself, sorry. Um, where was I? Play soft for low parts. Um, and you can pull in reverb um, for those moments when you like, kind of like, when you come low, you can jump the octave and kind of play those soft chords and bring in a little bit more reverb. Yeah, and that's um, just a really nice way to like keep it soft, but you can tell that I'm not adding, I'm not playing a ton, you know? So I'm sticking to just block chords, but sometimes one note here or there. Yeah, so... Um, just be really, um, conscience, uh, conscience, uh, I don't know what the word is. Be very aware, um, of the band. And that's another point that I'll get to in here in a little bit. Um, yeah, so for higher, the high energy moments, um, you don't obviously want to be playing like, I'm trying to think of an example, like, if we're playing one, five, six, four, like... sounds just no like that's not good um obviously like it's fun to like be playing a lot more for high energy moments i obviously do it all the time um a lot of what i'll do is i'll base like my left hand will play what the kick is playing the what the drummer's playing on the kick and then my right hand will be what the like they're playing on snare if we're playing white boy chords so it's like so if you think the drummer's playing kick snare kick snare kick kick snare kick snare kick kick snare so you can kind of follow what they're playing um but yeah sometimes it's just like a four on the floor beat so it's like um yeah actually i'll get to that too um but like well yeah i'll just tell you so uh living for the first time it's like no chance if we're playing living for the first time which is one of our new songs uh You can sometimes follow the four on the floor, but a lot of times what I'll do is like, I'll play the chord, but I'll hold the bottom note down. And then this will kind of add as ghost notes if you're playing ghost notes, like. If you don't know what ghost notes are, they're kind of just like little notes that you're in the chord that you're playing as you're like, um, like as you're just, like if you're playing this chord, kind of like play the five or the one at different times yeah um those are ghost notes um but be very picky like i said about when you choose to use that that's really just for high energy stuff um I, it's hard to give a full example because a lot of times i'll play and i don't even know what i'm playing like i don't think about what i'm playing um yeah so moments to be creative you really want to be picky also about when you choose to be creative and when you want to like create a melody. Um, typically I don't do that whenever someone's singing a part. So that, um, say for example, if we're playing a song and we bring it down at the end of the song and we're kind of just vamping on bridge chords, let's say it's a four, five, six, three, four, sorry, bump to you a little bit. Um, four, five, six, three. And say like the worship leaders are kind of just like feeling the moment and they're not really like, um, they're not really singing anything, you can kind of create a little melody, like, if you want. Yeah. Um, but don't try to play that while they're singing. Um, just be very picky. Um, if you don't know how to, like, create melodies, a really safe way to start is uh, using the pentatonic scale, 
which is if we're playing in C, it's the one, two, three, and then five, and then six. Um, so you kind of just like leave out the four and the seven uh, out of like whatever melody you're playing. Um, obviously, that doesn't apply to every like what I just played. I think was using the seven a little bit. Um, but if you stick with the pentatonic scale, it's a really good way to make melodies that like will sound good, kind of no matter what you play. So like. That whole thing was just played with those five notes. Um, so yeah, the pentatonic scale is, is really useful when you're creating melodies and stuff. Um, okay, let's keep moving on. Um, where am I? Um, yeah, so I kind of just want to talk about like um, your role as a keys player. So um, when we're playing in a worship band, um, it's very different. If you were taught you know, very classically trained growing up. This is a totally different ballpark um, because, you know, you when, you're, when you learn classically, you learn these beautiful pieces um, that are meant to be played on a piano alone. And so like, you're like the main, you're like the main role, like you're the main event basically. <laughs> um, so when you're playing in a band, it's such a different way of playing and you have to think about it differently. Um, you really want to pay attention to what people are playing. Like if guitars are playing a melody, you don't want to kind of like play on top of like another melody on top of that. You, um, a lot of times like just simple block chords is like what the moment needs. Um, but just be aware and listen to the band. Um, and just don't think too hard. Just like, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to teach what I'm like, trying to teach, but, um, just be listening to the band. The best way I can explain is like, um, the keyest player is one piece of a whole and the whole is the band. You are not the, like the whole of its, like you're, you're not your own. Um, the best way I can explain it is like puzzle pieces. Um, when you are classically trained and you're performing a, like at a recital and then you're performing this beautiful piano piece um you are like the whole picture of art in its own but when you're playing in a worship band uh you have to think as like that picture of art is actually made of different puzzle pieces and when you take one puzzle piece out um you can look at it and it looks weird on its own it feels empty um a lot of times when you're playing like you have to think that kind of way like um you are like when you think about what you're playing on your own, it's kind of, it can be sometimes be maybe too simple or something, or just kind of feel weird just on its own. But, um, but when you like plug it into the puzzle piece and you look at the huge picture, it has its perfect place and it needs that place in there. Um, so you are needed in the band, but you're just like, it's, it just looks very different. So that's the best way I can kind of explain it. So, um, okay, so a few song examples I want to give um, are some of our own songs. For uh, Never Leave, I kind of played a little bit, I think I showed you guys. Um, it starts really light, so I'll pull in a little reverb when I first start playing. Again, I'm just going to play everything in the key of C so you can kind of see what I'm... So it, it doesn't get confusing for you guys, but it starts with the piano line. Again, octaves with the fifth up there. And I'm just rolling that. And then going into the verse, it's just block chords. And I use the second inversions. Six, one. You'll see octaves, second inversions. And I'm playing light, but I'm playing confidently. Seven, one. And then three, four. Sorry, that's too much reverb at this point. Three, four. And then five. And I believe there's a piano line that actually... I bumped you again. Sorry about that. 
um, there's a piano line that actually like plays the second inversions, but it kind of like plays a little line with it. So I'm playing that second inversion, but it's yeah. Obviously, this is a very piano-driven song, so that's why there's so much going on um, in this song. But yeah, and then um, for the bridge, it comes down, so you like jump the octave, and you it has like a new line. Uh, haven't played it in C. <laughs> Yeah, and then when she starts singing the bridge, it's just back to block chords. Right now, I don't know how to sing. Right here, right now. You're not playing anything else except just those um, block chords. But it's the way you play it. You're, it all matters in how like you're playing the chords. Um, just be very like dynamic but soft. Um, yeah. Um, so that's kind of an example of like a low song. Um, but it's like piano heavy. So like I said, there's a lot more going on, but, um, for a lot of low songs, like, uh, you kind of just like, if there's other stuff, like if it's more acoustic driven or guitar, like electric guitars, um, just be very weary of like what you're playing. You don't want to overplay. Um, for medium songs, let's say like living God, I actually do a little bit of like inversions and white boy chords throughout that song. So um, the intro is four, five, six. I'm doing second inversions for the intro and throughout the verse. And then you can add some notes if you want. Um, when it goes to the chorus, I go to this white boy chord, so I kind of just do a lot of one fives. So you'll also notice that when I played that chorus, I'm kind of doing the kick snare thing. I can't sing. But yeah, you can kind of hear kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare, yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, and then when it goes to the bridge, um, I actually do some kind of like a mixture of using like those second inversions. I sort of, so I actually play octaves uh, of ones throughout the entire bridge um, for the most part. I'll play basically just a normal one chord. When I play the two, I'll play that. So um, it's still the octaves of the one, but I play the four in there, which is the third of the, you know, it's the, it's the third of a, of a two chord. Um, and that's it. I won't even play like, I won't play the full. It just kind of gives it like a little bit more openness. You know, I like openness. I like removing notes from where they don't need to be played. And then when I play the six, I won't even play the five in there. I'll just play basically the one octaves with the three to kind of create that six chord right there. And then for the four, I'll jump this note up to the six there, still playing the octave with the ones, six. So yeah, you can, sell, you can see that I'm not really playing like full chords. I, I've removed notes from where they don't need to be played, at least in this part. So um, when we go to that big bridge where it's like um, eighth hits, this is basically what I'm playing. That's a good example of something else that's kind of different. Um, 
that I play chord wise. Um, Things of Heaven is um, a really good example of how I use I, I use second inversions in that um, in that uh, song all the time. So six, four, one, three, six. seven and then pre-courses four one five six four so you can see I'm just playing those second inversions uh, even without the middle note there yeah um, okay so let's talk about a high energy song uh, let's talk about living for the first time it's one of our new songs so um, uh, for the verses, I'm actually just playing block chords that kind of follow um, the song. So it's just like second inversion. But once we go big, I'll kind of do a little bit more like playing. So I'm trying to think. is basically um, I think I told you this before but my pinky's basically not playing that note again but I'll play these two as ghost uh, notes and I still kind of follow that kick snare if you can kind of hear kick snare snare kick sorry kick snare kick snare snare kick snare snare kick. yeah uh, I can't talk and play at the same time like adding little ghost notes there and stuff but you don't want like everything to just be well sometimes I don't know if the, if the song calls for that um yeah it's hard for me to kind of talk about like what I play in high energy songs because I don't even notice sometimes but um yeah um that's kind of all I have this video ended up being a lot longer than I expected but hopefully this was um uh, valuable for you guys um, yeah, again, the biggest thing is just, um, these are all just kind of basics. Um, obviously serve what's best for the band, you know, um, you know, if you're, if you played a gospel, you know, like a hugely like gospel heavy church, this probably won't be much use to you at all. Um, but at least I read rocks, um, or at least what I do, um, that's kind of like how I play my, how my playing style is. Um, so that's kind of just like guidelines, but, um, yeah, again, the biggest thing is just is no matter what church you play at, um, just remember that you are the puzzle piece, okay? You're not the whole picture. Um, you're just a little puzzle piece that is a very important part of the whole picture because without you, it's not complete. Um, but you are not on your own the whole picture. Um, you just want to be listening to the band. You want to be paying attention to the room, what's happening in the room. You want to be really sensitive um, to certain moments. You don't want to overplay, um, but you don't want to like come across too, you know, timid. So just play confidently. Um, but that doesn't mean like powerful all the time, you know, um, just be dynamic and confident, listen to the band, pay attention to what's happening in the room and each song too. So, um, I think that's all I have for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, I guess, leave a comment on this video or something. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.